Hi everyone! In this video, we'll be discussing layout settings, where we have control over the placement and appearance of elements on the canvas. Let's start with the position. By clicking here, you'll see the available options, relative, absolute, and fixed. Relative is the default value, which means the element sits in relation to the normal document flow. For example, in the Layers tab, you can see that the header sits above the wrap component as its sibling. This is how relative position works. On the other hand, absolute positioning allows the element to be positioned relative to its container. Fixed positioning keeps the element fixed in place, regardless of scrolling. This is particularly useful for sticky headers. In addition to these options, we have an experimental feature called Sticky. Moving on, we have the margin or offset settings, which include left, right, top, and bottom. You can use the drag and drop helper or input fields to adjust the position of an element. Alternatively, you can use the input fields here to edit the margins. Here, I am changing the top margin of the header div from 50 pixels to 80 pixels, and you can see that the header dropped a bit more from the top of the page. Now let's see what the display property is all about. The display property determines how the element's layout is rendered. The default value is block, which starts the element on a new line and takes up the entire available space. When set to flex, it enables the flexbox properties. The none option completely hides the element from the canvas, including the preview and published pages. This can be useful for hiding elements in specific views. Next, we have the Z-index, which determines the stacking order of overlapping elements. Higher values bring elements to the top. So imagine the left-right positions of an element as x-axis and top-bottom positions as y-axis. Then the z-index will be the element's z-axis. That means if you have two elements that overlaps on the page, their z-index value will determine which comes on top. The size property includes width and height. You can adjust these values directly or use the resize handlers. You can also choose from different units, such as pixels or percentages. Fit Content adjusts the width to fit the content inside the element, while Auto takes up the maximum available space. Additionally, you can explore min width, max width, min height, and max height values for creating responsive layouts. Finally, we have Padding, which sets the spacing inside an element. You can adjust the padding for all sides or individually. Increasing the padding will create more space inside the element. Padding comes with two options as you see here. You can either go with a common padding for all sides or individual padding for each sides of an element. So that's a wrap to our dive into the layout settings. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you for watching.